Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. So... This chart that you're looking at here, my first chart, um, is actually the U.S. dollar index. This is a basket of the dollar against six major currencies. And, of course, I like to chart this, uh, this currency pair and keep an eye on it on weekly charts because you can see pretty clearly that we had on a stage one accumulation after a long sell-off going back to 2003 on the left side of the chart here. And we had a nice breakout into a brand new uptrend. Um, and you'll notice right now we're trading in some kind of a trading range here of the dollar versus the uh, six currencies. And I've noted old uh, support becoming resistance at around the 88 level. Well, since this is a weekly chart, um, it's hard to see, but this actually happens to be a couple of weeks already that we've tested this 88 level and have had a hard time getting past. So there's a lot of supply up there. There's a lot of resistance that needs to be uh, absorbed before prices can move higher, if they are going to move higher. And uh, so currently we have the dollar actually stalled out. It's not going vertical anymore. It's sort of like trading in a channel now between about 88 and 85. So with that information in mind, um, let's look at our hedge fund news from recently. Uh, hedge funds, we had uh, investors pulling approximately $32 billion out of hedge funds in July, which was the most since 2000. And as, uh, as it turned out, August was much worse. Uh, we had hedge funds getting rattled as investors seek uh, requests by funds of funds to pull cash out due to weakening performance. And we had a few funds like the Osprey Fund, from uh, um, that would be the Lehman Fund, that actually went bankrupt. They closed their flagship hedge fund after a 38% loss. And the last one down there was hedge funds lost $100 billion on investor withdrawals in October. So you see the number from down here, $100 billion versus the $32 billion in August. And you can get a, kind of get an idea of uh, why all the selling has been happening recently. They're being forced to liquidate. They have no choice. So the equity and commodity market volatility has forced multiple hedge funds to liquidate after large losses. Assets that normally move inversely are all moving lower as the various funds liquidate all their positions, which is a, it's a phenomenon called deleveraging. They have to sell everything, folks, so that means it doesn't matter. Assets that normally move in the opposite direction are all going the same way. So hedging strategies are recommended for a measure of protection for your capital, for any kind of individual trader or professional traders. Of course, it gets to be a little bit expensive to try to hedge. Um, I consider it calling it uh, buying insurance when the house is already on fire currently. Okay, It's very, very costly now. Um, again, the recent move higher in the dollar can be a result of multiple hedge funds seeking to improve their performance before the end of the year. So what is actually happening, uh, and from coming from that side of the business, I've seen this game played out a few times uh, in real life. Hedge funds pretty much just pile into one investment, and it becomes a momentum style. And earlier this year, we've seen the same kind of movements into oils, into grains, and into the metals. So what we have to do is constantly monitor the liquidation schedule. And, uh, just on 11.15 was a deadline that was imposed for um, – shareholders to request redemptions from the fund. So we have to watch that schedule and uh, kind, of a, kind of keep an eye on the news for what, whenever we hear that uh, there's going to be large liquidations from funds coming up in the future. Okay. So this is a parabolic soybean meal, uh, move. Okay. This is the soybean contract. Um, currently, soybeans are right back down here at around 640 or so. It's, uh, it's just bottomed out right back where it started from. So it was positive momentum, everybody piling in, okay? This is not the only market. I have another chart here of the wheat market. It had pretty much a similar move. Um, at one time, actually, a little bit later on, we actually had one trader uh, put on a very, very large short position in the wheat and actually almost blow out his, uh, his, uh, the firm he worked for. So these kind of moves are, um, you know, they're spectacular, 
but they're not sustainable. They're parabolic. So we usually look for some kind of retracement. So a hedge, again, is best described as insurance for financial instruments, similar to your car, home, or any kind of medical insurance. You're trying to reduce the risk of an adverse price movement in an asset. So a typical stock or uh, index hedge would consist of either taking a short futures position or buying put options. So, for example, you could be long stock and short a futures contract or long stock and also long a put for protection. The best time, of course, to hedge is when the volatility is low because uh, hedging has a cost. And you, you're not really trying to make money from hedging. What you're trying to do is prevent yourself from taking large losses or locking in gains as uh, prices moving in your favor. So your cost of your hedge is always going to be um, either the cost of purchasing the options or possibly the lost profits from being on the wrong side of a contract. But you have to pay, uh, pay up in order to protect your position in this case. So by, by, nef by definition, you're pretty much going to be... Uh, seeking to lock in gains, but you have to have gains first. Now, in the Forex markets, using spot Forex, um, a lot of the currency brokers, the spot currency brokers, they do sell options, and they do give their, um, their traders the opportunity to purchase options to use for hedging. Some of the strategies you can use are just common strategies like long straddles, long strangles, bull or bear spreads to a limit the possible potential of loss on a given trade. Um, again, selling expensive options is always a good thing to do when premium is very, very high and the volatility is very, very high. Um, there are several of these FX brokers also offer what we call exotic options uh, in addition to plain vanilla options. Uh, some of the more exotic options would be uh, barrier options, knock-in or knock-out options. Um, and you can check on some of that information with your broker to see if they are available if you are interested in trading the spot forex options um, for a law for a smaller premium for example on a barrier option you could actually uh, place a place a uh, a position that says if uh, the euro does not reach 130 before uh, the third Friday of December I would collect a premium and you can do that kind of trade for a very very small premium compared to actually buying uh, certain vanilla options. So check with your broker to see if they're available because the downside to any kind of these uh, option strategies is that not all of them are offered. So kind of have to look around. But you can also use the ISF, uh, ISEFX options, which are available right away in your stock uh, account to, try to heck, uh, protect your position. So for example, um, everything that I've done here with my presentation since July has been uh, to try to protect my option strategy that I planned out for entry back in July. So the dollar, as you can see, and this is a recently updated chart, the dollar has made some spectacular moves against some of these currencies. From 630.08, which is when I first did the first uh, slides for this presentation at 104, to 11.10.08, uh, the Australian dollar, the dollar versus the Australian dollar, gained around 43.44%. And if you look at the 52-week high and low for that period, it's astounding. It's 63%. Okay? So there would be a position for sure that I would be interested in protecting if I wanted to stay with that position. And as a long-term trader that, like I am, a swing trader, of course, staying with a trend uh, as long as it wants to run is my, uh, it's my number one goal. Okay? Um, the dollar has moved a little bit less against some of the other currencies like the British pound here, the Canadian dollar. Um, it's moved uh, pretty good against the euro dollar, but nothing like it has against the Australian, of course. It's moved very well against the Swiss franc. But notice the, uh, the dollar versus the yen. As of 11.10, we were actually negative. Okay, So that's one of the currencies where um, hedging um, and uh, trying to hedge a position would not have been the way to go. Um, I actually had plans for, um, again, I do everything based on the four stages of the market model, so I kind of had an idea that it was a possibility for a uh, retracement against the uh, yen. And uh, as you'll see when the slides come up, um, we did pretty well planning our trades uh, back from July till today. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, 
please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.